control over that, God. You allowed us another day of life, Lord. You gave us breath today. And so we choose to praise you with our breath today. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
impossible situations to turn around. Let's pray for those things that don't seem movable to be moved in the name of Jesus. If you have a prayer request, if you have a need, just quickly move out of your seat. We want to have a few moments of prayer this morning. I believe that the Lord gave us a word at the beginning of this year where God said, I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. Paul told Timothy, he said, I want you to wage war according to the prophecies that were made concerning you. I want you to fight the good fight according to the words of prophecy. When God gives a word, we have to fight for it. Amen? The devil will not allow that word just to come to pass by you just sitting back and letting it happen. You have to, you have to fight for it. So, so Paul told Timothy, wage war. According to the prophecies, according to the good word you receive, you wage war. You hold on to what God has said. So I want us to sing that again, and then we're going to pray. and We're going to wage war according to the good word that God said he will restore the years the locusts have eaten. What a, what a mighty promise. What a glorious, great promise God has made. But lift your voice right now and begin to declare this song as we sing it again. Let's sing it in faith. In Jesus' name.
spiritual warfare according to the word, according to the prophecies, according to what God has spoken. Hallelujah. Come on, let's declare what God has said. Come on, let's declare what he has promised. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That impossible situation must yield to the powerful word of God this morning. Faith moves the mountains. Faith turns the night into the day. Faith, believing the promises, believing the word, prophetic word. Hallelujah. We lift up our voice all over this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Repeat that promise back to God. Come on. Repeat what God has said. God, you said it. We believe it. God, you promised it. You will do it. Hallelujah. God, we lift up our voice in this place this morning. Corporately, we cry out to you, God, for the church, for the body of Christ, for the people of God, for all those things that concern us, God. Oh, God, you gave a word. You said pursue, overtake, and we will recover all. You said you would restore the years the locust have eaten. Oh, God, we pray, turn back the tide of evil. Turn back the tide of wickedness. Turn things around, God. Oh, God, heal sick bodies. Restore and rejuvenate every cell in our body. God, every joint, God, every ligament, God, every part of our physical body. Oh, God, may you give us an anointing like Moses who said, I am strong. My eyes have not dead, nor my strength failed. Oh, God, like Caleb who said, I am strong this day as I was 45 years ago. around in our families. God, lost ones, let them be found. Addicted ones, let them be set free. God, those that are bound, delivered. God, those that are captive, delivered. God, God, we cry out to you in this place. God, restore relationships. God, restore what the devil has stolen. Oh, God, oh, God, what the enemy's meant for evil. You turn it around. You turn it around. I pray breakthroughs this morning all over this place by the power of God, by the power of God, by the power of the name of Jesus, by the power of our shout, by the power of the victory that we have this morning. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh God, people set free, people healed, people delivered this morning. Hallelujah! Come on, let there be a shout among us. Come on, shout the victory this morning. Shout the victory today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we shout the victory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Yes, there's a shout of victory in this place. Shout of Reveal things right now, Lord. 
Reveal things right now. God, let the fear of the enemy be broken off of people. The fear of the enemy right now in Jesus' name. Because there's no weapon, no weapon formed against us that can prosper. Oh God, oh God, every tongue that rises up in judgment, you will condemn it, Lord. This is the heritage of the saints of God. And their righteousness, yes. oh God, is from you this yes. morning. We thank you for that. We bless your people in the name yes. of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, we thank you today. Hallelujah. 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 How many of you believe God did something in your life this morning? I don't know about you, but I sense the Holy Spirit touching people. And I want to sing one more song. We're going to go back to a song we sang. But I want you to celebrate the goodness of God. I want you to look at that person next to you and, and say, I want you to enter into the spirit of this song. It's a song we already sang. How many of you know that when you came to Christ, whether it was 10 years ago, 10 days ago, or 40 years ago, Jesus called you out of a grave. Yeah. Jesus gave you new life. Come on, I want you to sing that song. When he called my name, come on, it wasn't based on your righteousness. It wasn't based on your goodness. So if you're having a woe is me day and say, you know, I'm a worm, I'm no good. It, it's not based upon your goodness. It's based upon the righteousness of Jesus. Come on, let's take a couple of moments to celebrate before we transition. But come on, let there be celebration in the house of God this morning.
real what the Lord has done in our life. Amen, amen. Give a shout of praise one more time. morning hallelujah praise the Lord amen we welcome you here this morning to Victory Church I trust that you have been welcomed by the presence of the Lord and that you have sensed God's presence God is doing something in this place God is doing something in your life. Turn to the person next to you and say, God is doing something in your life. You say, well, I don't feel it. He's doing it when you don't feel it. I don't see it. He's doing it when you don't see it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We want to welcome uh, Sister Dorcas. Glad to see you here today. Would you just stand? This is Dorcas, her husband. Uh, Alexander were involved in a, a, a fire that, that that they didn't only survive, but they're going to thrive in Jesus' name. And good to see you. We've been praying for you. And uh, we've also got something to bless you with to help you financially to recover. And uh, recover all in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Linda, you have a testimony. If you can do it in two minutes. Amen. Just give God praise. Hallelujah. I just want to tell God, thank you. The trip coming to the last week, it been so challenging for me. But Monday, Monday my grandson died. Oh! He died if it was not for ball first and the fire department. Not Providence. I would have been crying. Mm -hmm. Because when he came out of the house, I had just left the house and my children were home alone. alone. Mm -hmm. And he, I don't know, he had all his, his stuff on him. He just took this long breath and his lungs collapsed. Mm -hmm. No cause, no nothing. My daughter had to pick him up literally, ran downstairs, called the fire department. She said, Mom, I don't know, I just handed him over to them. That's all I did, and I was just crying. And with the help of God, with the help of God, they were able to bring him back yes. before the Lord. Let's pray for one more time. Linda, can we come back here? Let's pray. Yeah, just stretch forth your hand. Father, we pray for DJ. God, we ask you, Lord, to continue to give life and strength to him. God, let this miracle continue to unfold. God, we pray, Lord, let it be a sign, let it be a wonder of the majesty of our God and of our Savior. Lord, let healing flow, let deliverance flow. God, we pray for protection over that household, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, Christians, followers of Jesus, are not exempt from suffering. We just have a Savior that walks with us and gives us grace to get through it. But we're made stronger for it. Amen. So praise the Lord for his grace. Just want to take time right now, if we can transition into time of uh, communion. You have your cups next to you. Uh, sometimes they're a little tricky. So if you want to just prepare them by pulling off the top to get that little, to get that little wafer. I, I don't know if I mentioned last Sunday or in the Emerging Leaders class on uh, Tuesday night about one of my trips to Africa, being in a church, they were speaking, I don't know if it was in Rwanda or Burundi, they were speaking in a language I couldn't understand before I got up to preach. And uh, went on for about 20 minutes and it was like a sermon. And so I leaned over and asked the pastor, what is he saying? And what he was doing before the sermon, before the sermon, it was a sermon. And this, they did every Sunday morning and for the purpose of explaining the simple gospel message. And I asked why, why did they, why are you doing that? Because he said there's so much, so many new believers, there's a lot of false doctrine and people don't understand just the simple gospel. And so what they're doing is training them and discipling them and clarifying what they believe. And I said, wow, that's a good thing. Um, don't get nervous, I'm not going to preach a sermon before the sermon. But it's important that we know the basics 
of what we believe. That this morning, as followers of Jesus Christ, we believe we have a God who loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son. Why? Because we're sinners. I don't think there'd be anyone here today that'd say they haven't sinned. We've all sinned. We've all missed the mark. We've all fallen short. But God loved us so much that he said, I will send my son to die for your sins so that your sins could be forgiven. They can be washed away. Amen. That you and I can go and be with the Lord in heaven forever and ever. Amen. Heaven is a holy place. Heaven is a pure place. You and I could never get there in our own merit. We can never get there by being good enough. We can only get there by God's grace. God's grace is revealed in the cross. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5 verse 8, but God demonstrated his love. It's one thing to say you love. It's one thing for someone to love you, but it's another thing to demonstrate. Because words are cheap. Words could be empty sometimes. Words are important, but we've got to back it up, right? And God didn't only say he loved us, but the Bible says while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Isn't that good news this morning? Don't ever forget it. Don't ever, uh, like Paul said, I, I, I'm concerned that you've been deceived and moved away from the simplicity of the gospel, that you've gone to another gospel that really isn't a gospel, he said. But it's so important that we remember that we are forgiven, that we are loved, that we're on our way to heaven, that God is at work in our life. And why is it important to remember? Because we need to be reminded of what God has done and we also need to be reminded that we are to live a life different now because God's given us the power Amen. Amen. Paul said it is no longer I that lives but it's Christ that lives in me and the life that I now live I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me I do not frustrate the grace of God because if righteousness came through the law then Christ died in vain this morning righteousness comes through the grace of God, through Jesus who died on the cross. We can get to heaven on our own merit. We wouldn't need the cross, but nobody can get that far in their own strength and in their own merit. You're looking at someone who was a mixed up, messed up teenager that was heading for destruction and death, but for the grace of God. You also were heading for destruction but for the grace of God, the love of Jesus. I have been changed. I have been regenerated. The Bible says that the washing of the word, the regeneration of the Holy Spirit that changes us from the inside out. Turn to the person next to you and say, I've been changed from the inside out. And so this morning, if you would take that wafer that simply represents something. It represents the broken body of the blessed, holy, sinless Son of God. Whose body was torn, his flesh was torn, he was beaten, he was brutalized. He was God in the flesh, yet he submitted and, and subjected himself to such suffering by the, at the hands of those that were sinful and those he loved and died for. And yet he took it, he went through it for you and I. Jesus said to his disciples, this is my body that's broken for you. Do this in remembrance. Let's give thanks and let's receive with a grateful heart. Amen. Jesus also took the cup and he said, this cup is the cup the new covenant of my blood. Why the blood? Because life is in the blood. And this signifies Jesus giving his very life's blood for you and I. It was pure, it was holy, it was sinless blood that would cover the sins of the world. And this morning, would you take a moment right now to just say thank you, God, for forgiveness. Thank you for a new life. Thank you for hope. Thank you for the ability to come back from failure, the ability to come back from, from defeat because of the blood this morning. 
thank you for the blood, Jesus. We pray, God, that each person would truly remember you this morning, remember their faith, remember uh, the foundation of their faith, remember the, the, the totality, really, of what we believe about Jesus. Lord, we just pray that the, the love of God would be revealed, God, supernaturally, God, not just words only, not theoretically knowing it, not head to head, but heart to heart, from your heart to their heart, that they are loved, that they are forgiven, and that there is a hope. We thank you for that today, and we receive this emblem as a memorial to remember what you did in Jesus' name, amen. Would you lift your hands right now as I pray over you, as I pray over our church this morning, the people of God. Father, thank you for my brothers and sisters. God, we are the family of God. We are the brothers and sisters because of that one blood that you shed, that, that one characteristics that, that makes us all one, God. Father God, I just pray, Lord, for unity in our church. I pray for broken relationships to be healed. I pray for you to melt away bitternesses this morning, God. Melt away, God, just any anything in our heart that's not of you, God. Just cleanse us, forgive us, and bring about change that's lasting and enduring, God. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Would you turn to the screen and just listen to some exciting things coming up this week? Victory family. It's that time of the service where we'd like to take a few moments to let you know some upcoming events here through the month of October. Life groups are a great way to connect with people in a smaller group setting. It also helps to facilitate a deeper knowledge of the Word of God and a deeper relationship with God. Life groups meet every Wednesday at 7 p.m. We also have youth ministry, kids ministry, and nursery. Baptisms will be coming up very soon here at Victory. What you can do in the meantime is fill out an application which is right at the Welcome Center. We will let you know the Sunday that the baptisms will happen as well as the class that must be taken. The class is very simple and just goes through the very basics of what baptism is all about. We will let you know those dates very soon. We have a couple events that are coming up in our youth ministry starting with our monthly merge night. This is where we meet the third Friday of every month to worship God, to encounter His presence, It'll be held at the Haven in Warwick, and it'll be Friday, October 20th. We really hope that your teens can make it out. It's going to be a great time to get together with youth groups from all over our region. Friday, October 27th at 7 p.m. is our annual Grog Night. This is a great night of fun where we get to scare the daylights out of your teens. It's a great opportunity for outreach where the teens can invite friends who maybe have never been to youth group or even stepped foot inside a church. We're going to have some games, some fellowship, and at the end of the night, we're going to share a gospel message, as well as pray over any teens who have been traumatized by the events that will take place during that night. It is an awesome time. We really hope your teens can be a part of this. We'll have more information in the weeks to come. It is that time of year for another men's breakfast. This month, on Saturday, October 21st, we'll actually be heading to Abundant Life in Swansea, Mass, to join other men from other churches in our region have a breakfast together, to worship together, and Pastor Brian Batil is going to be flying out from Montana. He is the lead pastor of First Assembly, and he has a powerful, dynamic word that he's going to share with us on how to live a fearless life as men. So we will ask you to do a few things. If you could go on to the church app to register, we want to make sure that we let Abundant Life know how many men are coming. Second, to let us know if you need a ride. The church van will meet here that morning at 8.15. We'll pile in the van and head out to Abundant Life. This is going to be a great opportunity to fellowship with men here from Victory, but also to join other men from our region. It's going to be an awesome time where I believe we're going to leave encouraged and faith-filled. So you can sign up on our church app today. Final Fridays is a great ministry here at Victory Church that focuses on kids between the ages of 10 and 12. We give them a little bit more attention where they get to come together the last Friday of the month to enjoy some snacks, make some new friends, but they also talk about life's issues and how to go deeper in their knowledge of the Word of God. If you'd like to be a part of this, we'll have some more information on our church app. Outreach is one of the heartbeats of Victory Church. 
If you'd like to get more involved in reaching out to our community, one of the best ways is to join our cafe team. Our cafe meets the last Thursday of every month where we serve a hot meal to those who are in need in our community. We cook for them, we share God's word, we get to sit and we get to pray with them. So if you'd like to be a part of that, this month's cafe will be Thursday, October 26th at 5 p.m. Volunteers can come an hour early to help set up and stay a little after to help take down. And we know that you're going to leave blessed. More information will be available on our church app. In the church world, October has been designated as Pastor Appreciation Month. So churches from all over the nation will be taking time to honor those who are in leadership over at the church. Our service will be October 22nd at 10 a.m., so we hope you can come be a part of that as we honor the pastors here at Victory. If this is your first time here at Victory Church, we want to welcome you. You are our guest, and we are so honored that you took the time to be here with us this morning. If you wouldn't mind filling out one of our connection cards, they're right in the seat pocket in front of you. Once you fill it all the way out, you can return it following service at our Welcome Center, where we have a really special gift for you. These connection cards really help us to pray with you, to answer any questions you may have about the church, and to connect you with people. If you're tuning in on our live stream, we want to encourage you to fill out a digital connection card, which can be found at our website at victorychurchri.com. One of the best ways to stay plugged in and connected at Victory Church, especially with all the events that are happening, is to download our free church app, which is on our website at victorychurchri.com. You can also subscribe to our free sermon podcast, which will give you high audio quality of this week's sermon as well as any sermon in the past. We do hope that you plug in, you stay connected, and we will see you this Wednesday at Life Groups. God bless. It always feels weird coming up after. I'm on the CD screen. Well, we just have one more announcement that Rachel wants to make just to let you know something exciting coming up. All right, guys. So how many of you guys remember the trunk or treat we had last year? Yeah. Yeah. How many of you guys were part of that? The kids had a great time. Yeah. And I think you adults had a great time, too. Yeah. I saw a lot of creativity, a lot of uh, enthusiasm and excitement and ideas flowing. So we're going to have it again this year. We're having it on Saturday, October 28th from 1 to 3. And uh, But this year we have a little twist for you guys. Uh, our theme this year is going to be God protects his people and so we're asking for those who have a trunk a trunk basically your car trunk you put candy in it we, we're going to collect candy but also you decorate with a theme and there are so many stories in the bible that you can pull from you could have daniel in the lion's den you could do jonah and the whale you could do the people you know israel parting the red going through the red sea there's so many examples of god protecting his people and watching over us so we want to see your creativity come forth, and we're going to have a little competition this year. So we want to ask you guys to try to come up with the most creative story, a way of presenting that story with your trunk. And we're encouraging especially families to do this together as a family. Have fun with your kids. Your kids have great ideas, trust me. They have lots of ideas all the time. <laughs> so... Have, do something as a family. If you don't have a family, do it on your own. Anyone is welcome to do it. Yeah. But we're going to have a sign-up starting tonight, and uh, we're going to have a vote at the end. Okay. Wow. So first of all, we're going to have a special panel of judges. I'm not sure who yet. Maybe the pastors. We'll see. Are going to vote which was the most creative trunk. And we're also going to have the kids at the end, as they leave, vote on what was their favorite trunk. Wow. And both winners are going to win an Amazon gift card. So, I'm hoping that you guys will start getting some ideas going. The sooner you sign up with your idea of your story, you get to claim that story. Because we don't want to have like 10 uh, Noah's Arks or anything like that. Okay? <laughs> so, look online on the church app. We are going to be um, having the sign up go live tonight. Also, if you can't be a part of it or choose not to, we are looking for candy donations in the foyer. We're looking for help that day with like the welcome table, setting up decorations, that kind of thing. Um, and probably we'll do some canvassing ahead of time. And also praying. Yes. Yes. Guys, we get a lot of kids from the neighborhoods. Yes. They get excited for this. Yes. And it's our opportunity to minister to them, to witness, to Absolutely. share the gospel with them. Yes. There's a lot of like weird, spooky stuff this time of year, but yeah. we want to show them 
the love of God. That they don't have to be afraid because God is with us. He protects us. So be praying, be giving, be thinking, and we're hoping to see those sign-ups pretty soon. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Rachel. We're already generating some ideas. I know what I'm dressing up as. So we have a special birthday in the house. So Pastor Richard, if you could stand today we also want to um, pray for our Israel team. Yes. So actually at this time, Pastor Richard, Pastor Lisa, if you could come just stand up and the elders, if you could just come and just lay hands. And church, if you could just stretch your right hand out, we're going to just pray over them, the Israel team. They're leaving today. Brother Kelly will be driving them, so we want to pray over him. The van is every part of this trip we need God, God's hands over. Amen? So, Heavenly Father, we pray right now, Lord, for this team as they are preparing. They've already prepared, God. And so right now, God, we pray that you would begin to pave the way. Lord, the second they get in the van, Lord, that you would just open up the highways, God. Lord, surround the van, every element at the airport, God, every plane that they're on, God, every pilot and co-pilot, Lord, that you would just surround with your presence, God. Lord, as the wheels touch the ground in Israel, Father, we pray that every vehicle that they get in, every hotel that they stay in, Lord, your presence will go ahead in advance. We pray for just divine protection. We pray, God, as they tour the country that you would be in it. God, as they spend time resting, that you would be in it. God, as they spend time just praying and interceding, oh God, that you would be in every prayer. And God, as they partner with different ministries, Father, that you would build bridges, God. Strong support, God, as they come back, Father, that we can get behind and Lord, we are just thanking you in advance for all that you're going to do. We pray for the team that is going with them, oh God. Lord, that they would be such an incredible blessing, God. They would come back filled. They would come back filled with testimonies. And Lord, we seal it in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 A lot of stuff going on, huh? We also want to remind you of intercessory prayer the first Saturday of every month. So this Saturday... Come out and pray. We'll take some time to pray specifically for the team that will be in Israel, for the outreach that's coming up with the kids' ministry, for the outreach in the youth ministry. God's doing so many things, isn't yes, he? Yes, yes. So at this time, we want to just go to the Lord with our tithes and our offerings and, and just pray. Amen? Amen? God is such a faithful Father who provides for his children. Amen? Amen. And I just want to share a scripture that the Lord just put on my heart. And... It's found in John chapter 6, and it says, After this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with the disciples. And now the Passover feast of the Jews was at hand. And this is a verse I want you to, because this is what I felt the Lord wants to speak over families this morning. It says in verse 5, Lifting up his eyes then, and seeing that a large crowd was coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? And he said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. And Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread would not be enough to, for each of these to get even a little. And so there's a mindset here when it comes to our finances, when it comes to provision, that Jesus, I love how it says he looked up and he saw the large crowds coming. And so we can have a perspective of looking at our current circumstances, or we can have a perspective of, of knowing what Jesus has done. And I was going to hesitate to share the details of this, but we've been in a season where God has just done that. He's lifted up our eyes, like with my family. And many of you know that we're, we're living the hotel life. The fact this Tuesday will be a month just getting work done in our building. And it came to a point where how many of you work with insurance? And insurance can be crazy, right? And so there was a time where, you know, we... I got a text message from the insurance company saying you're supposed to check out and the work wasn't done. And so in my head, I just started to get, the enemy just started playing and messing with fears. And we were at a conference just a couple weekends ago and we were, we were in this room with 7,000 other people and Francis Chan was one of the speakers and he comes out and he starts talking about the love of God. And in my head, the enemy's just, just speaking lies. And in my head, I'm thinking, okay, we're, we're supposed to check out and 
and I hadn't gotten through to my insurance, and it was this, it was going to be that Monday, Tuesday. And so as everyone's worshiping in my head, it's just circling, all right, God, what are you going to do? And I just felt the voice, the Holy Spirit speaking to me, saying, do you trust me? And you know how in your flesh you say, yes, I trust you, but you still, in your humanness, you're trying to get ahead, of, and, the, and then you have the enemy doing all this stuff. And so long story short, I, I Monday morning I wake up and I call my insurance, and they finally get through to them. And I said, okay, we got this text message saying we're supposed to be out. And she said, who sent that? And I'm like, well, you tell me. You're pumping it. And, uh, and then she says, she goes, it's already all taken care of. It's already been all taken care of. And it was so fun. So I went down and I checked in at the front desk just to make sure. And then they confirmed it. They said, yeah, you're already, you know, another two weeks. Everything's all taken care of. And I remember I went up the elevator much different than my life. And I just began praising God. And, and this scripture reminded me is... is he sometimes puts us in a season where he wants us to look up and see his perspective. He knew these people would be fed. He knew that he was going to provide for them. Not only that, but there would be basketfuls left over and nothing would be wasted. And so I share that this morning because I feel like someone in here needed to hear that. You need to know that Jesus is already looking at your situation. And he's looking at you saying, do you trust me this morning? And so can we stand this morning and have that fresh revelation of who Jesus is? He is our Heavenly Father who yes. provides. And even for me as a, as a father, I didn't have that growing up. And so it came to a point where the enemy was attacking my role as a father, trying to provide for my wife and my children. And, and God was, he was bringing me to that place where I am your father and I will provide and I will protect. And sometimes we get to those moments where it's really nervous when real life hits the Bible. Isn't it crazy yeah. how relevant the Bible is? Yeah. So this morning, someone in here needs that perspective. Jesus looked up and he saw the crowds. And then he tested Philip because he already knew what he was going to do. God already knows what he's going to do in your financial situation, in the situations of your family. Amen? He will meet your needs. He will provide. We just have to learn to trust him. Amen? And the longer we walk with him, sometimes the bigger the battles get and the bigger the, the encounters where we need to rely on him get. Amen? So let's lift up our hands. Our, our phones, whatever we are given with this morning, and just believe that as we come forward, that, that God would give us that perspective. We wouldn't have the mindset of Philip where we look at the what we have. We would look at what Jesus has and what he can do in the impossible. So Heavenly Father, we lift every family up. We lift every financial situation up. And God, there are some people in here right now who are in that same situation. God, where you're speaking by your spirit and saying, do you trust me in this circumstance? And God, I pray, Lord, that you would meet every need. Lord, we know that it's already taken care of. And so I pray that the only thing that we need to do is sit back and, and, and sit in your trust, God, knowing, God, that you have a different perspective than we do. And so we pray that you would multiply the offerings this morning, that you would meet every need here at Victory, every need in our community, every need on a global basis with our missionaries. Father, we give it to you, we thank surrender you, to you, thank and we you, thank you for the increase, we thank you for the overflow, we thank you, as Pastor said, that yes. you are going to restore what the enemy yes. has taken away, and we speak that over our finances, yes. we speak that over our families this morning as we give, and it is in Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen, you are at liberty to come forward and give this morning, thank you, and God bless. Blessed be your name, in the land that is
Well, we are looking into the basis or the basics of our faith, and we are looking at number four in uh, the list of uh, essential fundamental beliefs, and that is the fall of man. Uh, I'm going to ask Brother Pasquale to come. Uh, he is going to minister the word. He is a man that loves the word of God. I remember years ago, is that the same Bible you've had? I love it. I remember years ago looking at his Bible one time. He had it on the counter back there and turning pages and everything's highlighted. Even even passages in Leviticus. I mean, you know, you know he reads the word when you're highlighting almost everything. I said, is there anything un that's not highlighted? But that's a love for the word of God. And I know um, he's a good communicator. He leads our one of our life groups. And so would you just welcome him and just open up your heart to receive the word of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, this is a new Bible, and it's the yellow stuff is in there, too. <laughs> the fall of man. Wow, that, is, that sounds very heavy. It is very heavy. I think theologians are still trying to debate it. We're not going to get into some theological thing today. But the fall of man. You know, we to do the fall of man, we've got to go to the beginning. Right. In Genesis 1, God created. In Genesis 3, man fell. It didn't take too long, did it? It never does when we leave God out. But in, in fairness to the fall of man, the topic, let's go back a little bit further. What is man? And David, in Psalm chapter 8 and in Psalm chapter 144, he said, Lord, what is man? That you are mindful of him. Right. You can right. put your name in there. God, what, who am I right. that you care about me? Right. That you care about us? Why? Why do you care about us? You know, society views humanity with two highs and two lows. That's how they look at me. Give me an example, right? I want you to think about all those Rate yourself surveys that you've had to take. You know, one through ten, rate yourself in these categories. Now, listen, humanity always tells us we always end up going down the road of four, three, we're too low, eight, nine, we're too high. Or if we're sick and tired of the surveys, we just go five all the way down the line. <laughs> and it defeats the whole point of the, sur the survey. Or how, or how about the newest newest influencer that comes on the scene that says, you've been doing this particular thing all wrong. Mm. There's only one way to eat a certain type of food. It's just, you've been doing it all wrong. Right, right. Mm. The Bible, God's word, depicts us as we really are. Yes. So if, before we can get to the fall of humanity, let's see what God really, really says about us. What does he say? He says that we are special objects of his creative power. Mm -hmm. Amen. So if you have a low esteem of yourself, just pick it up a couple of notches. That's right. That's right. God says that we are special objects. You, I, we are the objects of his creative power. In the beginning, God. In Genesis chapter 1, let's read that. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over the cattle, over the earth, over every creeping thing. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created it, just in case you missed it the first time. He created them male and female. Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. And then in verse 31 he says, Then God saw everything that he had done. And indeed it was very, very good. good. You know, when you were in first, second, or third grade, at least in mine, they had grading categories. Good, fair, poor, very good. You know, parents always wanted to see that very good. Then they got VG, you know. Listen, God created you and me. He said it was very, very good. So if you've never gotten a very good, you got one now. <laughs> 
The image and likeness that are referenced in this verse implies that there's something like God about us. And that comes into both the nature and the moral image. What do we mean by that? By nature, it refers to aspects of our personality and our individuality. Aren't you glad that God gave you a personality yes. and an individuality yes. that you can share with somebody else who's totally different than you? Right. If you're not, you should. Right. Okay. And the aspect of moral refers to our will in our freedom or our choice mm. that makes fellowship and communication with God possible. Mm. Yes. And you know what? On top of that, we get to determine the degree of our fellowship with God. Mm. Mm. Yes, we do. Just a little in this box, mm. or you can have the whole thing, God. Right. Right. Amen. We get to determine, if you will, we get to choose that is based on our will and our freedom. He, he not only made us a special object of his creative power, but the other part of it is we are dependent upon God's sustaining power. Amen. 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 How many have you, of you have tried to do something on your own Amen. and you've been successful but only got you so far? Mm -hmm. That's true. That's right. true. John 15, well, we're going to go to two, I guess. John, John is probably one of my favorite New Testament books. It just puts a lot of things in order. John 15, verse 1 says, Jesus says, I'm the vine, and my father is the vine dresser. And then in verse 5, it says, I'm the vine again, and you're the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, there's much fruit, for without me, you could do nothing. Listen. God, our Father, is the vine dresser. He takes care of the vineyard. Amen. Jesus is our vine. We're the branches, and we're attached to that vine. As I was writing that down, I thought of my father. He was an agriculturalist. He could grow things like, really? And when they bought the house that we ultimately lived in for a while... He started taking these little, I don't know what you call them, little sprouts, mm -hmm. and he created, has anybody ever seen one of those tremendous great arbors? Yeah. Right? So he's got three, six, he's got eight little stumps, and they all started to grow up poles. And I'm like, a little sprout, come on. <laughs> and by the springtime, or within a certain time, that little vine started to grow. And in a certain amount of time, that whole frame was filled with the vine. And lo and behold, that was nice. Gave a little shade. But lo and behold, the time after that, you started seeing little branches. Not big, but little branches start to sprout out from the vine. And on those branches were all kinds of clusters of grapes. I don't know how my father did it, but you would have those delicious little black grapes that if you squirted, they'd go all over the place. And then you had the, the green grapes and then you had the green California grape with no seeds, man, sweet as can be. And how did you make this all grow on this vine? Because the vine dresser took care of the vine, and the branch was producing what the vine was saying produce. Unfortunately, Romans chapter 1, if you read that in full, it'll kind of be like a horse kicking you in the head. <laughs> clearly tells us that humanity is capable and has fallen into all kinds of idolatry, perversion, and sin. They became absorbed with self. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've yes. become sometimes absorbed yeah, yeah. with ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That fall, that self-absorption... Well, we've discussed what is man. The next step. What happened to man? Mm -hmm. What happened? God intended good. What happened? Well, as the pastor was mentioning about doing this topic, theologians could probably go on with this thing for days and weeks. <laughs> and he, he made a comment about, you know, how do you unscramble an egg? And it got me thinking about this children's fairy, fairy tale story. 
you know, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall, Humpty Dumpty had a great fall, all the king's horses and all the king's, king's men could have put Humpty Dumpty back together again. So we're going to make it as light as could be with the Humpty Dumpty story. He sat on a wall. Listen, mankind, through the deception, it says in Genesis that the serpent was more cunning than all the other creatures that God had created. And he caused deception to go into the minds and the hearts of Adam and Eve. First he says, did God really say that? Brings a little question mark. And then if God really loves you, why would he not want you to experience all the joys, quote unquote, of life? Especially that tree right in the middle over there. So the deception came in. It clearly tells us, absorbed with self. That fall, that self-absorption, it affected, and listen, it clouded their understanding, this is in Romans, of nature and the very laws of nature. Look around you, you'll see what I mean. It won't take too long to figure out. So if Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall, Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Humanity and its, and its tendency towards sin, it began with Adam and Eve, but listen, it didn't just stop there. It began with Adam and Eve, but it reached throughout all of history. It affected the entire human race, by the way, which really there is one human race, mm -hmm. right? It affected everyone, everything. It affected even nature. In the beginning, Adam and Eve were created, we think of like, oh, they were just innocent. But listen, they were created with real holiness of heart. What do we mean? They had a genuine inclination, a desire an affection to walk with God, to talk with God, to fellowship with God, to communicate with God. I share with him, he shares with me. Their fall, our fall, ruined their affection for God. Mm -hmm. Self became more important. Deception became reality, if you will. Mm -hmm. They're skewed, or they're like, Initial putting off of certain things became, well, that's a possibility. Their genuine desire turned instead into first unwillingness. They heard God call in the garden. And, you know, they got a little nervous because they weren't exactly right. Then their unwillingness turned to reluctance. They hid why would you hide from God? And then their reluctance ultimately turned into avoidance. Uh-oh. We don't want to deal with this. In Genesis, one of the most popular lines there is, Adam, where are you? You know, when you can't find your child for a second, where are you? And you're listening and there's no response. I mean, it's not like God, you're caught off God is surprised as to what happened. Mm -hmm. But they were in hiding. It's one thing when your child is playing a game, hide and seek, and you're hiding, and you're calling. And it's another thing when you know, like, you're totally, like, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Adam, where are you? Adam and Eve's fall caused them to become aware of a very serious thing. One, their sin. Mm -hmm. They found and looked, they were naked. Mm -hmm. They never knew that before. Then they were aware that they were alienated from God. That's why they hid. Mm -hmm. Then they realized that their falling, that their failure, that their sin, there was a penalty mm -hmm. attached. Mm -hmm. Never experienced that before. And that they would have to suffer from their penalty. And the Lord says in chapter 3 of Genesis, the ground became cursed. And from the sweat of your brow. Imagine that if he didn't do that, we wouldn't have to be sweating from our brow to get to work. Work would be pleasurable. Listen, I know it's hard to comprehend sometimes, and theologians will debate, and it's hard even in this, today's culture to right. put this into practice. But listen, right. Right. God in his holiness could not and cannot ignore the disruption of his divine. 
That's good. We can True. say no, 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 but God says yes, yes, yes. That's and right. the best, easiest way I can explain that is, listen, you can argue, we can argue all we want about the aspects of gravity. Just don't right, go up on right. the roof and jump. Right. Right. Yep. Right? Yep. Adam, all right. Adam and Eve didn't just cause, uh, receive personal consequences. You know, we live in a daily culture that, you know, we are victims. Yeah. And things are victimless yeah. crimes, if yeah. you will. Listen, they suffered personal consequences, but the entire human race was infected by sin. Mm -hmm. Sin did not exist until they failed, disobeyed. Innocence was lost. The divine image in humanity that they had, that we had, was distorted. Right. Boy, right. is it distorted today. Yes. And it was weakened. It's not that important. It's just not important. People became enslaved to sin and they became in discord. Mm. Read after chapter 3 and you'll see what happened after 3 with family members, upon family members, and others who, I did worse than you, I need better protection than you. Next thing you know, the blame game goes yep. on. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Eve blamed Adam, Adam blamed Eve, Eve blamed the serpent, the serpent blamed everybody else. <laughs> Ultimately, death entered the world. They were going to die. Mm -hmm. Imagine, we could be living, well, we will. We're gonna, listen, the fall of man, just by its very nature, is on the, oh man, that's a heavy topic. We're going to end up in a good, we're going to end up yeah. on good ground yeah. Yeah. in a couple of minutes, okay? Yeah. We have to end up on good ground, otherwise we're, we're worse than we yeah. could possibly think. Yeah. Ultimately, death entered the world. Even nature suffered at the fall. The ground produced thorns and thistles. Okay? You go in your garden at the beginning of the spring, and you go through those rocks that are there. So we've asked, what is man? We've asked, what has happened to man? The next logical question is, what now? Well, if Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall and Humpty Dumpty had a great fall, who's going to put Humpty Dumpty back together again? Right. And even more important, can he be put back together again? <laughs> right. Can he? Yeah. Listen, we can look through all of history and we realize kings and kingdoms can't put it back together again. All the king's horses, all the king's That's men right. could do it. And in history... From beginning till today, kingdoms and kings cannot put us yes. back yes. together. That's right. Regardless That's right. of what they promise, That's right. they're lying. That's right. They can't do it. It is not by might or by power, but it's by the Spirit of God. Yes. So then what now? What do we do? We're stuck in limbo somewhere. We're stuck. It's like, you know those, those uh, what do they call those, Pastor Mike, when you jump off of? Out of a plane and got a long rope and a spring. Yeah, a, bungee a bungee jumping. He gets jumped, he jumps out of the plane and something mishap happens. The rope doesn't break, but he's suspended in the air there, waiting for someone to come again. That's why you're never gonna do it, right? We get stuck suspended somewhere with who's can I? Who's gonna help me? Can I be helped? But God can and listen, and God did. We just have to understand it and maybe push away the deception. That's Listen, right. That's the, right. The Lord didn't say that the serpent, representative of the devil, was more cunning than all the others. He's the father of lies. He's been the father of life lies since the beginning. He comes to kill, no, destroy. He comes to accuse. So God did, but how? Isaiah 59, this is the good stuff, okay? You can get ready to jump. <laughs> Isaiah 59, verse 1 says, The Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Amen. So when you are suspended somewhere in the air and you think, I can't get put back together again, the Lord's hand isn't short that it can't pull you out of the mess that we made for ourselves. Some of it we made for ourselves. Others, it wasn't our own choosing. We didn't tell Adam and Eve, do this. I'll be glad you did. No. And by the way, if we were Adam and Eve, we'd probably do the same exact thing. Right. Right. It's not shortened that it can't save. Thank God that's the case. 
I don't have to rely on so and so. I don't have to rely on what and what. Because you know what? They're going to disappoint me. I'm going to probably disappoint them. It's a mutually exclusive thing. But thank God he's not. John chapter 316. Do I have to ask you? It's probably the most quoted scripture in all of the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. Listen, thank God for Jesus. Who didn't say, oh no, it's too hard for me. I'm, 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 I'm checking out. Who could have called legions of angels and said, enough is enough, I'm going to show you and prove you who I am. But no, he endured what we could not, what right. we should have. Right. 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 I know we fell, but thank God we didn't stay there. Yeah. John 12, 32, Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all people unto myself. Thank God for Calvary. Amen. Listen, it's not by goodness. It's not by looks. It's not by whatever social status you have. It is by the shed blood of Jesus Christ that we're going anyway. Amen. And if it wasn't for Calvary, we'd be having a big question mark. What now? Matthew chapter 28, verse 5 and 6 says, Angel said to those who came to the tomb, You seek Jesus. He's not here. He has risen. Just like he said. Thank God for the resurrection. Because if there was no resurrection, it would be just well-meaning love, but with nothing to back it up. God not only stretched his arms, but he rose so that we can rise. Amen. Revelations 5.5, 5. let's put an exclamation point on this, just in case you're wondering, well, what about my future? It says in 5.5, 5, the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. Amen. Thank God we had an ultimate victory. Yes, in Genesis, the beginning, we fell. Thank God we read the rest of the book and we prevailed. Amen. God wasn't surprised, nor was he disappointed. He wasn't disappointed, but he wasn't shocked, nor did he have to come up with plan B, C, and D. He had already in the works that Jesus would come on the scene. Amen. If you read the book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, there's a, there's a, a, a phrase in there, Aslan is on the move. Yeah. Yeah. And whenever you hear Aslan is on the move, that means... Jesus is doing something. And listen, if you fell too far that you think, look at Adam and Eve, man. They created this whole mess. They made it such a mess. And you know what? The world has been good at picking up on that mess and making it so convoluted and complicated and intertwined that there's no simple solution, no fix in the human realm. But we have a Bible. We have the word of God that says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word, you better bank on it. If you're looking for some kind of return on your money, bank on it, because it's going to endure forever. And Jesus puts that much more credit over his word than he does his own name. Because if I said it, it's coming to pass. So, what is man? What happened to man? Now what? In Acts chapter 2, when the Spirit of God came, and Peter rose up and preached, and he preached, and he preached to multitudes that were there, and his word cut them to the heart. You know what they said? What shall we do? Don't just close your eyes and say, I'm too far. It's really too complicated for me. The world has makes things complicated. Let's un you want to talk about unscrambling an egg? There it is. It's unscramble it. Make it simple. What shall we do? Peter said, repent and be baptized. Repent because you know what? We've fallen. Let's admit it. We've fallen. And be baptized, in other words, identify now with Christ, now with the deception. And when we begin to identify with Christ, all of a sudden, we get new life. We get new everything. We don't have to be fixed. 
like Humpty Dumpty, you know, uh, some of the little cartoons, they show how Humpty Dumpty kind of got fixed, and there's band-aids everywhere. Well, too much leaked out. It's not enough. God said, I'm going to make in you. Everyone who is in Christ is now a new creation. Old things, listen, say old things have passed away, but new things are to be come to me. Come to me. We may not look new because we have flesh and blood. But one day we're going to be new. Yes. Yes. We, 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 a close friend who just went to the funeral of Rosalie Lepinto, right? Man, she was ached with all kinds of pain, suffering, and ailments, of, too numerous to go up. She's got a pain. Yeah. You think yeah. she's right. crying now because of her aches and nope. pains? Nope. Nope. No. Right. All has been made new, yeah. even in the future. Yeah. It's been made new today. Yeah. It's been made new in our future. Yeah. I know the fall. It's a humdrum. How do we get out of this theologically? But thank God, it's Amen. not where it is. From the beginning, Jesus said, God said that yes, you may bruises heal, referring to Christ, but He's going to crush it. Listen, Romans says it's, the, the Lord will surely, surely crush Satan under your feet. Whatever it might be, that's the failure. Whatever it might be, like I'm not getting out. And whatever it might be, like all the band-aids on me, shortly the Lord will bring deliverance. He will bring salvation. It's not by friends, family, etc. God said it's by my righteous right arm. In the Old Testament, when God talked about his righteous right arm, it wasn't about physical power. When he stretched out, the rivers parted. When he stretched out, the enemy's camps got all disarrayed. They fought one another. When he stretched out, deliverances came. When he stretched out, salvation came. Yes, Adam and Eve blew it. We would have too. But Jesus Christ, he yes, has prevailed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand together. Amen. Amen. What a good word. Amen. Isn't it awesome about the truth of God's word? Jesus said, you'll know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Amen. Even truth that might seem unpleasant has a power to change us and to make us aware of our need. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We saw the fell, fallen man, but we also got saved. We're really going to get saved next Sunday. Because next Sunday is the doctrine of the salvation of man. What happened? You don't want to miss any of these. These are critical for the renewing of your mind, for the changing of your life. You know, you see the things of God or a sermon, it's not one and done, it's a continuous. Why? Because we need our minds to be renewed every day, every week. And I just praise God for what a glorious day we had. The praise and the worship, the communion, the prayer, the giving, the preaching of the word. We are blessed today. Amen. Would you lift your hands as we just receive another blessing? Even as God taught Moses to teach Aaron and his sons, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you, the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, and the Lord give you peace. The shalom of God rest upon you and your family in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. God bless you. God bless you.